Hey Gladdy Gang, what's good? Throw the fours up in the chat and welcome to the new workout series. Now, at the time of recording this, we have completed Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0. Now, as great as those workouts were, the training priority is getting ready to flip. We're about to start prioritizing more explosive training, still maintaining the muscle that we put on, maybe even putting on a little bit more, but that's just not the priority right now. Now, concluding Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0, the highest weight that I hit while I was on the bulk was 217 pounds. And that's great, but the side effects did start kicking in just a little bit. Not OD. It was taking me a little bit longer to warm up. Joints were a little bit achy after high intensity, longer dunk sessions. I feel like we still could go higher, but it's time to get explosive with this training though. Now I want to capitalize off of being this heavy and being this strong because we are going to be moving some serious fucking weight. We still loading up the bars now, but the difference is all of the movements are not going to be slow and controlled all the time. We're not prioritizing time under tension for muscle growth. Rather trying to move this heavy ass weight as fast as possible to be explosive. Also loading up different ranges of motion for when we're on the court. Now as much love as y'all show Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0, I did read the comments, I did look at the feedback, I did see the complaints. So with this workout series, we're going to be going through a full week in the life of these workouts. Y'all will have no questions on what the split's supposed to look like. I know that in Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0, I changed the format so that y'all can see how my body reacts long term rather than just short term with the workouts look like and when making a series long term like that you have to understand that the workout splits change because I'm still human at the end of the day I don't have just seven days a week to go in work out every single day and then on top of that fatigue is gonna hit me in different ways different recovery methods I'm gonna be taking advantage of everything like that however let's get down to the roots of how big guard boot camp started in the first place showing y'all what a week's worth of workouts look like for me and we're going to be doing that with this series right here with that being said make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on the notifications so you don't miss another video let's get into it chest and back on the way I feel like I'm doing myself a little bit of a disservice right now because I have a cut and I just shaved I actually look good why the fuck did I wear a do-rag I think I'm gonna have to take this off for today's workout especially since it is a chest and back day yeah let's get a little sexy in the gym you know what I'm saying see we looking all right y'all gotta y'all gotta get past the length I know the hair done got dumb long but so I know I cut my own hair by the way so yeah, DM me for bookings, link in bio. Nah, I'm just playing it. Nothing too crazy for the gym fit either, but one thing I wanna talk to y'all about as we warming up. Now my body weight for last season was around 200 to 205 pounds. That was the window. Now ideally, what I wanted this year was to be 215 to 220, somewhere in that range. But even if that doesn't happen, and I'm between 210 and 215, that's straight as long as we stay in explosive in the process. If I'm at 215, let's stretch it a little bit and say 220, just as explosive as I was beforehand. Oh shit. Coming down the lane, that shit gonna look scary. Not to mention, we are not gonna neglect the court work cause we coming back better than ever this season. Now I won't lie to y'all. Sophomore season, I hit a little bit of a sophomore slump. It's rookie season, oh man, I'm averaging 15.6 boards, I feel like I'm on top of the world. And then sophomore season comes in, I move up into a better league on a different team, and I hit a little bit of a struggle. What we not gonna do is sit here bitch and moan and blame everybody else for our problems. At the end of the day, lessons were learned and now I could come back better than ever for my third season. All right, so we're starting off with the bench, and before we get into our working sets, we're going to do one warm-up set with 135. We're going to push this for about 12 to 15 reps. Just making sure that our body is ready to go before we get into moving that real weight, you know what I'm saying? Now, the working sets is four sets of six, and I got a little surprise for y'all for the first two sets. Now, if you would kindly direct your attention to the weight on the bar. Again, as we move throughout these workouts, don't get caught up in the numbers. Please adjust the weight to where you can see your benefits and keep yourself safe. But you see that I put chains on the bar. Now, you've seen some people put resistance bands around the weights that, uh, that they lift for more tension at the top of the rep and still getting a good stretch at the bottom. I don't have resistance bands to put on the bar. That's why we have the chains instead. As we move the weight lower, the chains hit the floor and the weight drops down to around 185 towards the bottom of the rep. But as we lift the weight off of our chest, chains come off the ground. That weight gets added on towards the top of the range of motion. Now these chains are roughly 40 pounds, give or take a couple of pounds. We'll just call these 45s for right now. That means we're working with around 275 pounds at the top of the bench and closer to 185 door towards the lower end. The purpose of this is for increased power output towards the top of the range of motion. The chains also challenge a little bit of the stability and the shoulders throughout the movement, but as long as we control it, we're gonna be fine. Our first two sets with chains, 
Now we're gonna move the weight itself up and take the chains off for the last two sets. 235, should move like butter. Stay at 235 for today. Let's move on to some back exercises though. So now the first back exercise of the day is some weighted pull-ups. I told y'all beforehand in one of my other videos, getting hard trying to keep up with all the information I've given across so many goddamn videos. But one of my fitness goals right now, just miscellaneously, I wanna be able to do a muscle up, a strict muscle up at that. So I started incorporating more body weight pull-ups throughout Big Guard Bootcamp 2.0. I don't think I showed enough of that though. The body weight pull-ups were rep ranges between eight to 10, mainly for a little bit of hypertrophy. But now we're trying to get some serious power behind the initial pull movement. So it's time to shorten the rep range to about three to five, add some weight. I'm gonna keep it as simple on day one, the 45, but don't be surprised if we move up later on. 215, 45 pounds. I was getting roughly about 260 pounds off the ground. At least the weight is distributed somewhere where I'm used to carrying it. <laughs> nah, that was wild. I don't know if I'll leave that in the video. <laughs> First set, only four reps. Still taking advantage of full range of motion. I'm gonna try to push for five next one. I ain't gonna hold you, it's about time for the pump cover to come off. Whew. Told y'all I've been rocking stringers these days. Got me feeling like a little bit of a bodybuilder. <laughs> I ain't that swole yet though. I'm not gonna hold you. I might consider bodybuilding after I retire. If I'm not too old, if my testosterone levels is still up there. I'm gonna have to pop some blue chews before I get a lift in. No sponsor. No, <laughs> let me stop, let me stop. Back to the chest portion. We got a single arm incline press. Y'all already know we want as much even strength in both arms as possible. Completely isolating each arm. Add a little bit of demand from the core in there. Keep it light. Go go with the 80s. Control it the whole way to start off. Not done, because we're gonna go ahead and superset that with some chest supported rolls, exploding up, control it on the way down. Back onto the chest, we're doing one of my favorite fly variations, seated incline cable fly. I like this variation better than the pec deck machine. The muscle fibers in your chest actually stretch out to the side. These cable flies, not only do we get constant tension throughout the entire exercise, it's also a little bit easier on the shoulder joints because the cables allow a little bit more freedom of movement. gonna require a little bit more uh, core stability and strength simply because we don't have the bench in front of us for our opposite hand to rest on. But all we do is lower the, lower the weight and go with a little bit more of a twist to engage the torso a little bit more. Still getting a good stretch and good pull.
So I talked about these deficit push-ups beforehand in a different video, and I'll overlay that as I go through these deficit push-ups. Deficit push-ups increase the range of motion and stretch that you get in your pecs and shoulders, strengthening the stabilizer muscles and joints in your shoulders that can reduce the risk of injury. Because of the deep stretch, you also get greater muscle activation in your chest. So we could take these up a notch by adding a resistance band to increase the power output from our upper body. This is also a little safer than stacking weights on our back for weighted push-ups. We can also make these deficit push-ups explosive. Now we strengthen in those fast twitch muscles that are usually neglected in the upper body. Not to mention increased core strength and posterior chain stability. And of course, the pump that we get afterwards ain't too bad either. Now that I'm almost done with the bulk it's time to start prioritizing explosive training a little bit more 215 flying like this yeah it's about to get scary we're gonna finish off tucking our knees and knocking out these pull-ups see what the pump looking like now y'all already know what I'm about to say. Don't get on me too bad in the comment section because I ain't no bodybuilder, I ain't no powerlifter. I'm just a hooper who likes to pick up heavy shit. Meaning that I don't really know how to pose like that. But we still looking all right though, you feel me? 217 don't look too bad. But as we finish up this workout, it's time for us to head over to the court and get some work in. Kicking off the court work with some stationary ball handling. Breaking out the heavy ball to get that hand speed up. And notice how my eyes are up scanning the floor during the entire session. Try giving yourself random tasks like counting the bricks on the wall or reading signs in the gym. It seems basic, but stationary ball handling is a fundamental that never goes away. Remember, you control where the ball goes, not the other way around. So you shouldn't have to move your feet unless you're actually trying to go somewhere. Trying to get the most that we can out of the simplest thing. Now, I did repeat the workout with the regular ball before moving into the next two ball session. This was mainly for hand-eye coordination and then also... Also being able to pass with one hand, especially with my off hand. And please don't get discouraged if you mess up. As you can see, even I mess up. This is how you know you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, and it's the only way to get better. Now, after ball handling, I did get some shots up, but I actually started off shooting with the weighted ball. I started off close at all five spots and slowly worked my way back, even off the dribble. Yes, we lift weights to get stronger, but shooting is also muscle memory. So to put it in layman's terms, imagine taking all the new muscle that we put on and trying to give it the same memory as the old muscle so you can keep your jump shot consistent. Along with being able to shoot through fatigue, that's another reason why we shoot after we lift. Now shout out to good drills and zero bounce because I'm using this drill to stay low as I get into my pull up jumper. Now, usually once we start shooting free throws, that means we about done. But now we really just gonna get some regular shots up and I started off with free throws first. Then shooting just regular jumpers on the perimeter to shoot the last of the weights off. And that's the conclusion of the workout. I hope y'all enjoy this new workout series. And I hope y'all ready for this next level athleticism on the way. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you know you don't miss another video. Till next time, y'all know the vibes for me. It's peace, love, and happiness to everybody. Continue to stay safe and stay on the grind. Big Lottie Gang, fours up, we out.